Okay, we're back. So it's about noon. Please disgust me. Get them out of my face. <laughs> On the twelfth of Shatter Spring, <laughs> like it's still five. a moderate day, and you guys still have not decided what you're doing. So what are you doing? Um, no. Go ahead. I say we go to the bandit camp and then Nurgle's lab for the uh, transformation on Pride. Yeah, I, um, Clark, you might want to be interested in hearing this. I actually had a vision of the Great Old One. Um, like, I was somewhere near Nurgle's Lab 4, and then I witnessed um, a bunch of uh, tan elves uh, basically cutting out the heart of one Goliath, removing his head, and then giving it to the other one. Um, I'd be curious to explore with this location that the division pointed me to, which is... Uh, Near Nurgle's lab, number four. This is also close to that bandit hideout, so, I mean, we can do, like, three things on one trip. Um. You should, yeah, you should definitely relay everything you saw to Nurgle. Okay. Do you think we should visit Nurgle before we go to the ruins, or explore first and then go after? I say we. I think we could go to the ruins before. Um. Did Pride actually explain everything to? Yeah, I've, I've read it, yeah. wrote it down in this journal. I'll give it to you to read. Anyone else who wants to, and you can get all the. So Clark. What is going through your mind as you kind of come to the realization that he's not bullshitting you? You really do think that he had a vision. What is your initial thoughts on that? Um, yes, finally. Now just three more to go. Uh, <laughs> um, but for real, like, oh, see, I'm not crazy. Holy shit. So he can. He's finally acknowledged and excited. And mm -hmm. the great old one has a good use for him, which is probably to create him or. Yeah, turn him into some two headed Goliath beast, <laughs> which is what right. we all really want. It's what you really want. You want to be Ogre <laughs> Master. Yeah. Um, he wants to be Imperator. Oh my god. Oh, what was that guy's name? Imperator Margok. You're gonna be a war Margok. Margok. Imp Impregnator Margok. Yeah, Impregnator, <laughs> Impregnator. Margok. <laughs> um, <laughs> gods. Uh, Fuck that boss. Yeah. So, well, I'm glad that we now have two contacts with the great old one. Mm -hmm. I just wish that we could contact him more easily. I wish he would call more. Yeah, <laughs> I wish Daddy would call more. I wish I wish he didn't block his number every time he called too, so I couldn't call him back. Um. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to know. I want to know in like great detail what this ritual was and. Um, yeah. Do you want me to and, tell you more about it? I mean, said, or? yeah, yeah. I basically just want Pride to like explain what the ritual was to Clark. And okay. Then... Yeah. Um, I'll I'll relay it to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, TLDR. Big details were chanting elves. Someone made a heart, um, and then they took a guy's. And then the other guy rose up. Two heads and a bigger body as well. I wonder if I wish there was a way for you to share the vision because if you could share the vision with me, we could, or I could, 
understanding the language, I could, uh... Oh, hear the actual perhaps, chants? Yeah, perhaps write it down. And know what they were saying in order to use it for an actual ritual. Possible that uh, Nurgle might know a way to access that knowledge. So let's watch him. Yeah. All right. Yeah, Pride is of very little used to on, on that front. He tries to be like, I think it was uh, like, e -com -bo -com blah, blah. Yeah, like, yeah, I don't exactly. Know. Know. <laughs> uh, they did a ritual. They said e some words. E -com -bo -com. Oh, great. Okay. That's definitely not Caridian, so they didn't say e -com -bo -com. Um. E -com -bo -com. <laughs> Byron, you said, you said we still had my house rented or something. You said you yeah, for about a week. Let's go back there. I'm going to try to make contact with uh, with Nurgle. You got his number or something? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I got him on speed dial. Alright. Let's go. Okay. Um, need to right, that base for, uh, check out. You guys make it back to Clark's former establishment. And what do y'all do? Uh, I want to try to scry with um, Nurgle. Um. Wait, I thought scrying was the one where you could talk to them. No, that's sending. Right. Which I don't have. Um, but I oh, still want to scry. I, st I still want to scry because I want to be able to. Want to try to figure out where he's at. Sure. Hey, yo, where are you at? Um, okay. Target's wisdom saving throw modified by how well you know the target. Um, you are familiar. You don't have a body part of them, but you are familiar with them. Yeah. So, you don't have a likeness of picture or anything like that. So, it's just going to be minus five on his spell save. What does he need to make? Uh, my 19. Yeah, 19. You have a 19? Save for DC, spell what? save DC? Yeah, dude. Holy shit. Charisma modifies yeah, this, dude. Crazy. What? Uh, I, my charisma is like it's god eight, tier, dude. 8 plus your charisma mod plus your, yeah, your proficiency bonus. Yeah, so it's uh, 8 plus 5 plus 5. Why is it calculating? Yeah, yeah. No, what? but but it's calculating nineteen off my character sheet. Is it? Yeah, if it's I eight think plus that's five. right. Eight plus five plus what? Proficiency bonus. Eight plus my proficiency bonus is five because I'm level twelve. And your charisma is plus five. And my charisma is plus five, or sorry, I'm level thirteen. So it's got to be nine then. Do you have an item enchantment or something? Well, my my necklace gives me two charisma, but that's being calculated in there right now. We don't know. Uh, so it's got to be nine yeah, plus five. Yeah, probably should be. Eighteen. I mean, the character yeah, sheet is literally be. calculating it for me. Yeah, but the character sheet can be wrong. I've yeah. had that in the past. In fact, I just had it with Casey the other day, and I couldn't get it to be correct. I had to manually adjust it. Uh, so you're... Oh, if I back six. myself down to 12, that gives me a 14 proficiency bonus. And spell save DC 18. Yep, it is plus 5 at 13th. And then... Uh 
Is there something I have then? I don't think there was anything I had that was increasing it. Uh... That's what I'm trying to figure out. Um... Not for being a halfling or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And... I don't think we manually edited any items in here anyway. To give you a bonus. Uh, seeing if we did any modifiers in here. I don't see any. Buy levels default, yeah. I think it's wrong. I, I mean, yeah. unless you can come up with a I don't know why it's calculating that. Uh, is there something wrong in the main sheet somehow? Five proficiency, yeah. Oh, your Christmas twenty-two. How is it twenty-two? It's not twenty-two. It's twenty. Oh no, it is no. twenty-two. Yeah, because I. Hmm? So we have to address that. How is it twenty-two? Oh, is my charisma. Is it plus two for your necklace? It's plus two for my necklace, but I don't yeah. have a 20 in charisma. Oh. You sure about that? I mean, I'm fairly... The best you could roll is an 18. No, but and you... Ability score have, improvements? Ability score improvements to bring it to 20. Feats. And the necklace will oh, yeah. allow you to go beyond 20. Yeah, so then I've used... Then I've used... um. You probably rejected a feat and went yeah. up to twenty charisma. Because I've I've only taken one feat so far. So, right. Yeah. And, and I did. So I, did I think I did two into intelligence and two into yeah uh, charisma. Yeah. Because because that would mean you've used so. two ability scores on stat increases. Yep. Okay. I'm Where glad that we addressed so, this. Okay. Awesome. So you are really nineteen. So not it, it, screw yeah, everything it up. Sorry, I was cool. the reason I was thinking it was five was because I was looking at intelligence because the font's so fucking small. Right. Okay. Uh, well, he fails. Great. Um. So what do you see? <laughs> Mostly, what I'm looking for is is it a lab that I recognize? Oh, I'm going to tell you in a sec. Uh, where is he? Okay. So, you get a vision of Nurgle. He is not at a lab. He is in the middle of a desert. And you can see the mountains overhead. And he has all of his, well, you you guess they're his, uh, his uh, slaves or whatever, his humanoids, uh, his humans, and he has some, a couple elves, a couple dwarves. He has a number of goliaths, which you guys brought to him, and he has them feverishly digging. Okay. And you mm -hmm. said the mountains are in the distance? Yes. Which direction are they? Um, they seem to be west of his location. Would that put him somewhere over here? You know what? It would. Somewhere west of the mountains. And it, they don't seem that far off. And not these... Okay, never mind. Alright, cool. Neato. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, hmm. Oh, are they digging with their hands just for flavor text? No, they have digging implements. Okay. Um, they seem to be making decent progress. You can't tell what they're digging for or anything like that. There's nothing protruding out of the sand. 
Um, it's basically holes, you know. <laughs> what did Kirk use for like the? There's the a bunch scrap. of ravens that are flocking in the sky. What did what? What did Clark use for like the focus of the sky? Ooh, that's a good point. What did I? What did I buy? Or did I not buy anything yet? Because we haven't been in fucking town yet. God damn it. Oh, we have that. No, because I was. God damn it. I was going. No, I was going to buy. Um, I was going to buy something when we got to town here, and I don't think I did. Well, we can't think, retcon no, this, so well, we need to okay. we need to retcon you having not bought oh, it. I and went. Have it be a I thing. went and bought it. Okay. Um, uh, how much did something cost? A thousand gold. One thousand GB. So, so where are you gonna buy? That's a good. That's RP thing. Question. Uh, can it's I? Be what are you buying? I want to buy like an eyeball. Of some sort. Can I buy like a glass eye? You want to buy like a really ritzy glass eye? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's just an eye patch. I think that'll look cooler. <laughs> sure. Thousand dollar eye patch. Yeah. You can get one that's like you know, may you know has platinum in it, and you know it's it's not like encrusted or anything like that because someone you know ostensibly would want to put this in their eye socket if they lost an eye, but it's a very high quality. Yeah. It looks dope. Yeah. So, okay. oh. thank God yeah. you said something, because, like, I literally, that was, like, the first thing I wanted to do when we got to town last time, and then, <laughs> it's so hard yeah, to keep track of shit like that when, when your plans go out the window. Byron, uh, do we want to, yeah? would you, at any point in time, have addressed Clark's uh, disheveled appearance? I guess, like, he's gonna... Yeah, I guess that balding and whole black eye thing is a little concerning. Unless, like, Clark decided at some point he's gonna, like, change his appearance to be, like, closer to what it used to be. And... I mean, he hasn't said that he did it again, so... Right. Yeah, so... So, uh... you, uh... You feeling alright there, buddy? <laughs> uh... See? I, I, I am feeling fine, right? I just look worse and worse? Or do I feel like I, I mean, look worse and worse? You just generally always feel shitty when you're traveling, but I mean, other than that, like, when you kick back for a while, you feel pretty good. Okay. It's hard to say, you know, it's like you just generally feel sweaty and awful all the time when you're traveling in the desert. <laughs> okay. I mean, yeah, it'd be awful. Nothing too terrible. I'm feeling good now. Um, you uh, looked in the mirror lately? <laughs> uh, I suppose <laughs> not. I did spend a night in a dungeon, and we've been in the desert for months. So, but, I mean, my hair's falling out. Cool. And all, and it's not much. Pull out like a hand that. mirror and just kind of like show them. It's like, yeah, kind of look uh, worse for wear there. Maybe uh, we could buy you a wig. We've been talking about for the longest time. Some, uh, um, yeah, so it's your some... right eye specifically, Clark. Uh, oh. It's kind of like this inky, dull purple hue. Wait, like the eyeball itself, or like mm -hmm. oh, the okay. eyeball? Yeah. When you're saying like black, uh, it's eye, your like... it's your iris, yeah, specifically. Okay. Yeah, mm. and I'm bald. True. Like, do I still have eyebrows? I uh, look like a cancer patient and like no hair. You look like a cancer patient, yeah. Hmm. So it's kind of like uncanny. It's not very so fun. you look sickly, yeah, for yeah. sure. Not very great to look at. You've been rough before, but I think that we're gonna have to put on a little bit of makeup just for you to go around. Well, the good news is, um, I can indeed. Disguise myself at all times. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So. Uh, I will um, go ahead and cast Disguise Self to make myself okay. look just younger by a couple of years and have hair. Mm -hmm. What I looked like, you know, five or ten years ago, maybe. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, six pack, just for effect. And what? Oh yeah, and a six pack. <laughs> and uh, like a whole uh, forearm protruding out of my pants. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I want to look like Gosling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I made Can myself look five, five years younger, but like Ryan Gosling. <laughs> is that one of your features or whatever, or is it a spell slot? It is one of my features. I can cast it whenever the damn hell I please. Okay. Got it. So you can just do that um, if you want to try and make yourself look different. Uh, but I'm going to require you to, you know, tell me you're going to do it, you know, or whatever before you go yeah. into a town. Otherwise, you're going to just kind of look like a sickly old man. I mean, I'm legitimately going to, like, cast it first thing when I wake up in the morning. And keep it on as much right as well because it's an hour duration yeah i just can't have people saying i auto cast because that's like weird i don't do yeah. that D &D. we also can't like auto role cast. play every, yeah, once we... <laughs> once an hour every single hour for no, the entire of campaign. course not but i'm saying like whenever you're going to enter in a yeah. town you want to look yeah. presentable i need you to yeah. say it otherwise because auto cast is awkward i don't yeah. like it yep um, times so... that matter yeah. Okay. Uh, so what's the plan? Uh, well, uh, it would seem that Nurgle is in the desert west of the mountains. Somewhere. Or east of the mountains, rather. Somewhere. Um, not terribly sure where, but he's digging for something. possible my vision is tied to where if he's digging close to where my vision told me to go it's possible it's all related so true maybe the great old one great dm old ones directing us together <laughs> yeah um i mean Dude. i almost think that has to be it so are we gonna cut through the null territory or are we gonna go around I think we could cut through the knolls. I mean, they, like, we could run along the coast until we get to the knoll territory and just, like, head a little bit south of them. Or just cut through them. Byron, I think we cut through. What if, Byron, yeah, could you use some of your clout to maybe we could tag along on a ship and then get off we're past the knolls and then just walk the rest of the distance? Eh. Uh... Up to you, and very distrustful of ships after what I had after what happened <laughs> time. Alright, understandable. You've taken a ship from this route before though, and you weren't harassed in any way. That's true. It was just specifically um like traveling oh. between White Dune and Sandscorn where those snake yeah. boys are where you had trouble. I think. Right? Uh, we we, we did No, it um, was this route exactly. But the and but it was like the 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 fucking first mate and shit that was the problem oh, was on the it? ship oh shit oh yeah like that the was first mate was like a fish yeah, that boy was a, and... you're right the saw wagon and whatever yeah, yeah. okay yeah. never mind um i mean the chances of that happening again are very unlikely but yeah you also have to pay for passage well, well here's I mean, the thing we should... Long we should probably talk to the commander and figure out what he wants to do about this whole Andrarius thing. And we can tell him we're headed south and we'll try to talk to the Druid Queen. But um, I fear that if we don't do anything, if we don't go treat with Andrarius, that he's just going to like ship off over here and murder everybody again. I mean... He's probably gonna do that either way. Yeah, but I mean, it would look really bad if we just left again and then everybody died again, <laughs> and that wouldn't help our yeah. cause at all if everybody just died again. We should definitely meet with uh, like I guess I don't know. He's definitely not gonna sign off on like trying to treat with Andrarys. 
Well, Thank no. You if we're and, gonna meet with and I totally honestly don't want to. <laughs> um, yeah. So you just want to get his opinion on on what to do with on, with the situation. Well. Yeah, I want to figure out what he is planning to do, because I don't think their their forces are strong enough to hold off the hordes of undead that are surely going to come this way now. Yeah, that's true. Also, did you want to stop by the magic shop uh, before we leave? Do you think your relationship with that guy is shattered? Mm. You know, I'm not a terribly big fan of Amos. Uh, yeah, screw that guy. But, Let's uh, go. Mm, mm, we could maybe stop by there, I guess. It's gonna laugh in your face. I wanna, I wanna know how he survived. I mean, he's a powerful guy, so. But I want to yeah. know details about what happened, because I'm sure he's just about the only person that does know what happened here in town. Either the wizard locked himself inside of his tower, teleported away, and came back. Probably. Many possibilities. We could ask him definitely. Right. Well, let's so, go ahead. Where first? Let's go tree with the uh, commander. Whatever. Okay. Whatever it is. Colonel. Colonel. Sure. Commander. Oh, okay. Uh, so you guys are gonna have to struggle to get an audience with him once again. Um, you can do so, I suppose, by the end of today. Again, it's the twelfth of Shatter Spring, and uh, you know it's the same thing as before. You're escorted all the way up to his uh, his chamber, and he's busy, you know, scribbling in a book of some sort, and uh, kind of nonchalantly addresses you. Yes, you wanted to see me. We were yeah. considering we were we were making our plans of what to do next, and I think our next option is to try to find an audience with the Druid Queen to see if she will be annual to uniting against against Andraris, or at the very least letting up on the uh, embargo. Mm -hmm. uh, he had like a set of spectacles on. He was um, reading a book that was close to him, kind of scribbling in it. Puts it down, takes off the glasses, and looks at you. You're going to try and treat with this druid queen. Good yes, luck. she's well clearly hostile, so it's going to be a hard task. But we also want to get your opinion. What will happen? What's the next plan of action against Ares? Against the undead? Yes. Well, if my scouts have it right, they are hard at work uncovering something. Seems like an ancient city. I... Where, where is this uh, ancient city located? Uh, he unravels a large map and uh, he puts it here-ish. I can look at that map and I'm sure Arden's going to give it to me. No, we don't know the exact size of it, of course, but it seems to be eh, rather sizable at any rate. We don't believe they have any purpose set on assaulting us anytime soon. They're not moving their numbers in this direction as of yet. <clears throat> and we, quite frankly, are not prepared to lead an assault on them either. <coughs> <coughs> they... <coughs> kind of... Trust chooses words carefully. 
I was expecting that we would have received larger numbers of reinforcements by now, and having to split my forces to protect both the north and the south simultaneously has been a chore, to be sure. We can only hope to hold what we already have. We, can, we are in no position to lead an assault, not now. We need to garner our forces and build up our barricades. So that's what we'll do. I fear that uh, refusing to kneel before Andrari's will cause him to preemptively move this way and destroy everything that's been rebuilt. And like you said, you, the humans don't currently have the numbers or the defenses to deal with such an attack right now. Well, with all due respect, this ambassador came to us almost two months ago now looking for you. They haven't made a move yet, and they certainly don't know that we just now executed him. He shrugs. I have no reason to believe they will change their movements, but if they do, then... Well, what further recourse do we have? We can't leave our towns and cities unoccupied and launch an offensive against them. They have the numbers as well. And every man that dies on our side will join theirs. Well, hopefully we can head to the south and at least gain a temporary ally and make it back in time. And what is your plan? I hope you have a better one than going up to the front gate. Well, fortunately, I, uh, I don't believe we have much other, much of a plan other than that. Though, this, uh, talisman might have some sway with her. Why? Seems as though... Uh, there... It seems as though she, the druid queen, may have some knowledge of it, and... another... Uh, gemstone to attach to it. He kind of thumbs that over. Do you believe this talisman is something that she desires? Could we use it as a bargaining chip? You know, it's hard to take power away from somebody once they have it, and I have to say I'm not exactly willing to give it up, but... It may show her that uh, we mean business, or that um, that that we actually align more similarly than previously thought. P shrugs. It's worth a shot, right? I don't know. To be frank. I don't know that it is. If she acquires this uh, talisman, and it's something of greater power than you can fathom, we might have an even stronger enemy on our hands. I don't much like the idea of you walking to the front gate and handing it to her. Well... I don't plan on giving it to her. She'll have to 
take it herself, but there's a lot of them, and I'm sure she's quite powerful. You're not reassuring me. <laughs> well, these are dark times. There's not to be, not a whole lot to be sure of, right? Well, I would strongly advise that you come up with a better plan than what you've presented me. At the very least. Well, I hope to uh, gather a little bit more intelligence on her on, her, on my way there. And uh, perhaps bring some reinforcements with me. We'll, we'll see, though. Do you need passage to Sandscorn? I could arrange something. Hmm. It, I suppose it would be faster. Um. Then what? Walking through the desert? He kind of chuckled. Indeed. Yeah, that sounds dumb. Spitz is quite a, uh, he's quite knowledgeable of the desert. Yeah. And I, I trust his guidance. Yeah. And we do have a stop about halfway there, or a little over halfway there to make. So. But, uh. Oh? How many squares do we usually move a day? I just want to kind of think this through myself real quick. Usually move like is it sixty miles a day. Uh, you can usually move about no. You can move about thirty miles a day. Thirty. Okay. okay. Yeah, we travel eight miles an hour. Yeah, dude. Well, I mean, fucking basically running when we have spits with us. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, moving four miles an hour in the desert is yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, so how many days passage would it, how many days would it take to travel? Just how many days does it take to get to Sandscorn by boat? Mm. <clears throat> On one of my ships, three days. So it's really about, just about the same amount of time. And it's probably significantly safer. Oh, it's, it's way shorter than if you walk to Sandscorn from here. Yeah, if we walk to Sandscorn. It's like half the time. But I'm talking about getting to Nurgle's lab is like five days by foot, and it's a two-day travel from Sandscorn. So oh, well, he doesn't know where you're yeah, going. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I'm, I'm not <laughs> disclosing where I'm going with him. I'm just thinking in my head. Um, It is safer, though. I, I think that perhaps we could... Um... We'll we'll take that ship if if you if it's not too much of an inconvenience for you. He shakes his head. No. We have regular shipping routes that go between the two civilizations, so it's no inconvenience at all. When do you need to leave? Tomorrow would be great if if there's something. And otherwise, just the next ship. Hmm. So the next one, well, I believe is in two days' time. So it's up to you if you would rather go on foot, but I can reassure you that it will be significantly safer. Uh, we do not leave our, <laughs> our merchant vessels uh, unprotected. Not anymore. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll I'll, I, yeah, we'll, we'll take that ship, I do believe. Okay. Alright. So you guys have two days to kill. Um, they're gonna leave the morning of the 14th. Uh, so, what do you want to do between now and then, if anything? I will uh, go visit Amos. Yeah. Do you want to do that today or tomorrow? We can do that today. Yeah. 
Okay. Tomorrow, Barmer's gonna focus on trying to like figure out how uh, which one, Casey's powers work. Try to train him. Okay. So, you guys mosey on over to Amos Lyris Lies uh, Magic Shop. Ring a ding ding. Uh, no one to turn loves. And he glares at you. What do you want? I thought it made I made my position clear back there. I don't trust you. <laughs> I suppose you don't. Uh, but you must realize I mean no. Do you trust him? Could. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean no ill will to you directly. Just merely trying to keep myself alive. I know that we weren't exactly friends, you and I. But I've done good work for you, identifying your items, providing you with details about the desert. And you don't so much as give Man. me notice that there's a, a mighty bit of trouble on the horizon. Why in Terra would I help you after that? Wait, hold on. Add a game. Didn't Clark give him a warning before he left? No. I, I remember I asking I remember him, that. like, do you want to say anything, Deimos, about this? Mm -hmm. You're like, no. Nah, yeah, screw him. Yeah, that's basically <laughs> your attitude, I remember. Uh, oh, like, okay. yeah. Well, if my memory serves me correctly, you had a friend keeping an eye on me. It's interesting that you knew so much about the talisman. And certain somebody was incredibly pushy about it. Always wanting to know more. See me use it. Hold it for he themselves. Shrugs. Such is the nature of those who pursue knowledge. Right. Well. That's, uh... Yeah. We'll just call it even. You didn't die. You're fine. Your building looks like it's still here. But I'm curious, were you here when... Or were you here for the duration of the attacks? He kind of just stares you down for a few moments. Of course I was here. And then I wasn't. Hmm. So well, I was, I was curious if, uh, if you had any information about what happened during the massacre. How much are you offering? Not much, to be honest. Uh, he shrugs. I'm just. Curious. Uh, I'm wondering if uh, you got to meet Andrari's for yourself. Oh yes, we sat down for some tea and had a good conversation. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Must have been splendid tea. Mummy no, wrap tea. No, I don't tea. drink that Splenda shit. <laughs> <laughs> Mummy wrap tea by chance. Uh, <laughs> if we're quite done here. Fine, so be it. I'll, uh, I'll be off then. Best of luck to you. Byron will stick around. Well, now that that's over, doing business. I'm sorry, who are you? Lord uh, Byron. Yes, didn't I see you? You were with him, weren't you? I consider myself his handler. Difficult and trying job. But, this is what I do for the time being. You know, he's bad news. You really should split things as quickly as possible. I know you're alone, I... so I wouldn't want my name tied to that if I were you. I struggle with it every day, but I think if I'm going to get... Save the hold on the of the him from this area. I'm going to have to travel with him. He's one of the more knowledgeable 
and frankly powerful persons in this desert. And I hate to leaving a job half done. He shrugs. So, <clears throat> Lord Byron, what do you need of me? I just wonder what you have for sale. I don't have anything for sale at the moment. I, everything that I've had in the past here has been requisitioned by the military for emergency purposes. I have my services to offer. That's what I sell. I'm truly sorry, but I, so I will, but I will take, uh, I will take purchase of your services then. What do you know of alchemy? I do a bit of dabbling, uh, as any wizard ought to. Well, how does a hundred gold information, something to help me in my studies, sound? Hmm. Okay. Yeah, that sounds okay. He doesn't seem particularly busy, so he'll take you up on it. Uh, okay, I don't know what I, where we're over this. What was or, that? You're, you're cutting out. Actually, I'm not exactly sure where to go from here, so you want to gloss over this and say we handle it later? Or do you want to... I, I, well, I would, at the very least, I need to know, like, kind of what you're trying to do, or, like, what you're experimenting with, or what you're trying to ascertain. Uh, okay, I should answer then. Um, I mean, I don't need tons of details, I'm just trying to understand what you're doing. I guess deriving new potions and thinking of new ingredients. Just gonna workshop it, and if he has to pay for to get more information, you just so you want to exchange maybe like knowledge? Yeah, okay, so you'll give him some, you know knowledge of some of the ingredients you know and he'll give you maybe some things he knows and yeah i'll you i don't know i'll have to i'll update the sheet uh after this session and then i'll let you know when i'm done okay okay so yeah you do acquire a couple new a couple new ideas you know how to maybe look at things a new perspective uh, you do get the impression this is a pretty knowledgeable guy you he seems like a middle-aged elf, which puts him, uh, you know, like 300 years plus old. He's, um, when he said he dabbled, you're like, okay, you know, he's uh, underselling himself here a little bit. Yeah, yeah did, did you mention if he has any, like, uh, uh, regents or components or something like that? Yeah, he does. Or, like, yeah, of, of course. They, yeah, they didn't take all that shit from him. He needs it. All right. I'll spend an extra, like, uh, 400 and just get some stuff that I could have. Okay. Um, if you want to PM me stuff you might be interested in, then I can kind of think about it, and then I'll see if... I'll roll, like, if he has it or whatever. Okay. Okay. Or I can just uh, yeah. do it at random if you don't have any idea. But uh, just give me, like, an outline of things you'd be interested in. Uh, okay. So I'll just put PM you a place and I'll edit it. Yeah. Some stuff. Okay. So you acquire some reagents and some knowledge. And, uh... I don't know. Maybe... Maybe a working relationship with this guy in the future. At least for you. Um, okay. The rest of you kick it, and we'll flip to the next day, which is the 13th of Shatterspring. It's a severe day, Spitzy Boy. You would not want to travel on foot today, if possible. But you can travel around the military fort if you'd like. If you want to do any shopping or anything like that. Otherwise, we can skip it and uh, head on to the 14th. I think we should skip it. We can skip, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Alrighty. So, you guys get up bright and early on the 14th of Shatter Spring. It's a moderate day, Spitz. You could travel today if you needed to. Not exactly what you're hoping for, but you can do it. You know the seas will be choppy. Um, that is how it is. So uh, uh, we're gonna make sure or ask if 
there will be room on the ship for the caravan of now four camels or five camels. Uh... Who do you ask this to? The like the the captain of the merchant vessel. Yes. He's like looking at all your stuff, and he's like, "I was not told that you would have all this gear." I, you know, we we pack our ships pretty good. I I heard you know five six people. Okay, I got room. Mm -hmm. What do you what do you got here? Five camels full of shit. Come on. I'm running a business here, guy. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not getting paid for okay, this. Okay, yeah. Hey, so that's fine. Um, if there's a stable master here, I can leave them with. Could you bring them to Sandstone on your next voyage? <sighs> Jesus. Uh, or I'll pay you a pretty penny. Yeah, um, he thinks about it. 50 gold, and uh, I'll, I'll find a way to get your camels there uh, as soon as possible. But, you know, I got a running schedule here. Mm -hmm. know, a week or two, maybe? We'll see how it goes. That's fine. Um, I'll give him 50 gold. Okay. Uh, but I do need to be able to take some of these supplies with us. All right. Uh, and then on top of that, look, I, two, I need... may, one or maybe two chests full of stuff. Okay. But I really, I'm serious. We're, we're packed here. Right. Okay. So, um, uh, basically I just want to bring like our adventuring gear. You know, tents and okay. kits and stuff like that. And then the armor for the camels. Okay. And I'm gonna leave I'm gonna leave you five camels and four alpaca. And mm -hmm. here's fifty gold and please bring them to uh the stable master or bring them to sorry, bring them to this address, and I'll give him the address of our house or whatever, like how read well, this. No, no. He kind of like looks at the sun. And he's like, "Look, we gotta, we gotta go. You yeah, need yeah, to bring yeah. these we... to the stables right now, yeah, or they're yeah. gonna be left here." So we're gonna offload the stuff, bring the things to the stables, and I'll, on our on our ship ride down, I'll explain to him where to bring the camels and alpaca when we okay. when he does bring them down. All right. Yeah, the camel armor yeah. DLC. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he is, I mean, that's a lot of shit you're taking. Like he said, like a couple chests, you're like, got all this fucking camel armor and stuff. And he's like, oh, my fuck. <laughs> Ashra, please. What <laughs> What did I sign on for? Yeah. All this? Get the. Get on the good side of the colonel. All right. <laughs> Life. All right. So he begrudgingly takes you guys along. You know, he's comping your entire trip. And um Look, I'll 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 pay you some gold. I'll give you some gold. The uh Yeah, I mean this happened to you before. Uh the first day of travel, the captain gives you guys just a you know, a bunch of wax and he tells you that there's sirens on a small island. Um, mm -hmm. um just yeah, it's something they have to deal with. They just, you know, move mosey on past them and it's fine. Just you know, stay below decks if you have to. Put this in your ears for a couple hours. It'll be all right. And uh, you know, you get past them. It only takes you guys about three days. Um, it's pretty rough going, especially on the third day. Uh, but you, you know, the weather is awful. But you know, they know how to handle it. You have a caravan of uh, a couple of merchant ships and a couple of naval vessels as well. And you're not harassed at all the whole trip. Uh, it seems like they have these waters locked down pretty good. And you guys pull into Port Sandscorn, 
early on the 16th of Shatter Spring Spits. You know this is a severe day of travel. Uh, right away you can see the sands of the desert are shifting like crazy. Okay. Um, not, I'll relay that. Yeah, not a great day to travel, if at all possible. Um, but you guys are, you know, I guess home? Back to what you've called home for mm -hmm. quite a while. And, uh, yeah. It's super early in the morning. What do you want to do? Did you yes. actually want to pay the captain? Because you just said you were going to. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I already subtracted the fifty gold. So, uh, okay. well, for for the camels, and then uh, yeah, but then you were like, "I'll yeah. pay you." Yeah, and then I'll give him um, another twenty gold for his troubles. <laughs> All right, he thanks you. And uh, yeah, I give him the information of where where to have somebody bring the camels to when when they bring them back. Right, right. Well, I'll send uh, I'll send my guys do their best when we get back here. But uh, if they can't, you'll you'll find them at the stables. Okay. Was it? It's the same guy, right? The stable master and the guy that was taking care of our stables that we have to pay right now, anyways. It's the same guy, right? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, that's that's fine. Just tell them they're uh, Clark Brandywoods. Okay. Right, we'll let them know that he, they'll be coming. All right. Yeah, the crew is busy offloading a bunch of stuff, paying harbor masters, doing all the good stuff. Um, and what do y'all want to do? Uh, so I go to the stable master. Okay. He's and... like yawning and. Uh... Working with some horses. And he says, Ah, oh, where the hell you been? Ten days past due. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we ended up in uh, Sandstone. So, took a ship back. Um, you know, give you your payment for the last 30 days. And, uh, give you payment for the next 30. Well, and all you pay up. Yeah, I pay up front. Yeah, so, so you're well you're the just, last ten days and then you're the just next back one. to yeah, ten days. Yeah, so uh so we uh we had to leave our pack animals. Okay, so how much are you paying? It's a gold a day, so it's how far do you want to pay him up? Well, so I'll pay him thirty right away. Um mm. and then I'll pay him the next thirty days as well. So Okay. So through shower bloom to summer tide. Um, and I'll let him know that I've got camels coming from cam camels and alpaca coming from sandstone in the next couple of weeks, and uh, they'll uh -huh. either drop them off here or at our personal stables. I gave them the address, but they said they'd probably just drop them off here. So. Um, All right. So they'll let you know who they are. But uh, apologize about right, well, the annoyance. The agreement was with the animals we have currently. So if I have to hold on to those too long, I might ask for a little bit more. That's fine. We're gonna take some of these. Uh, we're gonna head off into the desert. I need you know, oh. five camels, anyways. Or, okay. I have no idea how many he's watching. So there are eight. There are okay. eight there. Okay. Alrighty. So, we're you gonna requisition. Yeah, we're five gonna take camels like, from. Well, six, because Casey needs one too, right? So. Sure. Okay. So Clark, Pride, Byron, Rolf, Spitz, and Casey all get. Camels. Well, I'll just use my horse. Oh yeah, you have a horse. So yeah, yeah. five. Five, sure. All right. I don't know, maybe maybe uh, Rolf is gonna ride his two. Uh, Two mastiffs, <laughs> like surf on them or something. Yeah, about that. So, 